Dear friends, it's not uncommon that we find ourselves helpless in certain situations. This is one such case. An intermittent cataract in a middle-aged patient. The anterior chamber is quite shallow. We can make out the tense anterior capsule. And my plan is to stick to my usual technique which is the double rexus technique wherein we make an initial small rexus then decompress the bag and then make a larger secondary rexus I usually prefer to use IV mannitol in most of my intermittent cataract cases and that's what i plan to do in this case as well so i begin my case the planning is perfect so i make my side port incision then stain the anterior capsule with trypan blue and then after washing away the trypan blue i'm using sodium hyaluronate to flatten the anterior capsule and hoping that it will give me better control during my initial small rexus well the plan seems to be perfect so let's begin the case ready steady go i touch the capsule and boom she goes it took just 0.11 seconds to run away It seems that we have a new world record. So now what? What's going to be our next strategy? The rexus has gone radial. So what's the big deal about this? The tear can extend beyond the equator and cause posterior capsular tear, which can in turn cause nucleus drop. or it may extend later after nucleus management and cause vitreous disturbance in this situation we have got two options to choose from convert to sics or ecc or proceed with phaco emulsification in this case i decided to proceed with phaco emulsification since the nucleus was soft i begin by decompressing the bag by aspirating the swollen cortex My hope is that by decompressing the bag I'll have better control in trimming the anterior capsule. So I'm just trying to aspirate the swollen cortex. The anterior capsule is very thin and in this maneuver uh, the capsule gets torn a little bit. So after forming the anterior chamber with OVD the small tag is torn off. Again I'm proceeding with decompressing the bag from the other side. So once uh, I feel that it is enough I proceed to enlarge the capsule to meet an adequate size. An important point I would like to highlight is I'm injecting OVD at the periphery of the anterior chamber. This is to ensure that we don't increase the intracapsular tension which will happen if we inject the OVD in the bag in the center of the capsular split. So this is one thing which you need to remember. So after making two small nicks using a micro forceps I'm enlarging the capsulotomy using the healthy poker forceps and this capsulotomy should serve the purpose it looks to be adequately sized so I am aspirating a little bit of an epinucleus initially uh, and then I plan to proceed with my direct chop the nucleus is very soft so I'm taking enough care to ensure that my maneuvers are as little and as gentle as possible during the chopping and lateral separation this minimizes the chances of the posterior extension of the anterior capsular tear since the nucleus is very soft it's really very easy to just split it open and then uh, uh, emulsify it so i'm using a very low parameters of about 30 flow rate and 400 vacuum and 30% ultrasound power in torsional phaco 
So each of these fragments are emulsified in the uh, pupillary plane. So we are left with one last fragment. Again, I'm using OVD. Uh, this fragment has come up in the anterior chamber. So with ease, it can be emulsified. So the nucleus management was very easy. Uh, then in this case, as expected because of the softness of it. So we are left with one a chunk of epinucleus. Uh, and I'm again forming the bag and the anterior chamber with the OVD and then trying to aspirate out the epinucleus uh, with my bimanual irrigation aspiration handpiece. The last chunk of the epinucleus and some of the cortex is removed without any problem. So the nucleus management and cortical aspiration was quite uneventful and the job is done. We just left with implanting the intraocular lens in the bag. So I'm using HPMC to form the antechamber and the capsular bag. Uh, and then I'm implanting the IOL. Uh, this is a single piece hydrophobic lens. It is an Auro view lens from the Auro labs. The lens is then gently dialed uh, into the bag and I take care to remove most of the OVD which is there both in front and behind the uh, the intraocular lens. I just like to highlight one important uh, point to be noted here is that when we orient the haptics it's important that the haptics are oriented away from the equatorial tear. Here I'm taking care to ensure that the haptics are right angle uh, to the meridian in which the equatorial tear has happened. And this orientation is critical because otherwise we may have decentration of the uh, the intraocular lens. So again, before removing my irrigating handpiece, I'm trying to hydrate my wounds so that we don't have any shallowing of the chamber. And then we just close the wounds by hydrating and that's it. The case is done. Well, I'd like to conclude uh, by this message that Rexis Radial is a reality, it can happen many times and we've got two options to choose from. We can either proceed with performing fake emulsification or we can convert to SICS or ECC. Both the options are right, there's nothing wrong in that. We need to remind ourselves about the priorities uh, in this patient. We need to ensure that good visual outcome is there and the procedure is safe. We can choose FACO and the criteria for choosing FACO would depend upon the following three criteria: The skill level and the experience of the surgeon, the hardness of the nucleus and coexisting pathologies like small pupil and issues with the cornea. The bottom line is when in doubt play it safe, there is no harm in converting. Ego absolutely does not have any role to play in the decision making. Thank you for your attention.